We are recording. It is in progress. As I respond to a text. Howdy. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Aggressive. <laughs> My head's feeling a lot better, so that's something. That's good. My head is feeling a lot better, too. Good. The glasses, I do think episode. they're helpful. And I, I had them on they and are. off a little in our last episode, but um, I have them on standby here yeah. now as well. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the Gallifrey Gals Get Warped. Warped. I have my space show adjacent mug. I also have my space show adjacent mug. At least that. yours is one that we actually cover on the channel. I'm just Listen, like X-Files. I wish I had the energy to sit and react to X-Files because it's such a fucking good show. It is good. So it good. is good. Um, I haven't seen all of it, but I've seen a good chunk of it. Um, so yeah. Hi. We're Hi. We're here today to watch Star Trek The Next Generation and That's Season right. 5, Episode That's right. 16. That's it. You know it. I can uh, see that it's called Ethics. It's called Ethics. I have a rough understanding of what the show, or what the episode is, what the show mm -hmm. is. I think I get the show. I think I understand what the show is about. I think. A hundred episodes understand. in, or whatever, however Star many we Trek. watched. I think. <laughs> Uh, but no, I have an understanding of what this episode is about to be yeah. about. So yeah, I, uh, yeah. I I've given Katrina a rundown of the plot, and I think a a pa another patron a patron of ours um, mm -hmm. ran down some things as well, and we just talked about. So for anyone who doesn't know, and you're watching this, this episode deals with suicide, and yes. basically whether or not a character should be allowed to end their own life based on Due to uh, for medical reasons, basically. Yeah. Um, so it's a triggering topic. Yeah. If that's not your jam, then skip this one. Just skip it. It's completely fine. And you know what? We might, who knows? Part way through. We're going to see as of right we now might going into this. Stop I watching it. Um, in a mindset where I can watch this. Okay. So, but we'll see if it changes. And if, if it that does, happen. that's fine. And, and we'll just stop. So, you know, cheers. That's how it goes. So I just want everyone, everyone to be aware. Yeah. Um, yeah. This one might be. This one might be tough. We'll see. We'll see uh, how it goes. Yeah. So let's do it. Let's do it. There is no restraining field. But I can't move my legs. I know. You can't move because one of the containers shattered seven of your vertebrae and crushed your spinal cord. I'm afraid there's no way we can repair this kind of injury. I have a personal favor to ask. Name it. I want oh, you to assist me in performing the Hecba ceremony. <laughs> I want you to help me die. What? Overdesigned Klingon anatomy. Twenty-three ribs, two livers, Jesus. eight chambered heart, double line neural pia mater. I've never seen so many unnecessary <laughs> redundancies in one body. Unnecessary? The Klingons refer to it as the Brock Lull. All the extra organs means just that much more can go wrong. I mean, they didn't create it themselves. It's just how their bodies are. It's just their like what? <laughs> what? That's what I was like. <laughs> This they, is a genetronic they didn't design their it reads the DNA coding of damaged organs. That was translates that into a specific so talk to Klingon God, I guess. <laughs> then begins right? to grow the fuck? replacement. I've read of some of the preliminary work you've done. If something goes wrong, he'll die. I agree, it has remarkable potential. But you're still in the most preliminary Honestly. stages of research. No, I'm afraid I can't justify the risk to Worf. We'll have to do with more conventional approaches. In mind, not to judge someone else's culture by my own, but for Is me to be part that... of this ceremony. I understand from Dr. Crusher that Worf will never regain the use of his legs. 
That doesn't mean that his life is over. That's a very human perspective, Will. He could lead a long life when you and I could learn to live with a disability like that. Not Worf. His life ended when those containers fell on him. Now, we don't have to agree with it. We don't have to understand it. But we do have to respect his beliefs. I can respect his beliefs, but he is asking me to take an active part in his committing suicide. He's asking for your help because you're his friend. Alexander is scared, confused, hurt, all because his father is refusing to see him. You know why I left those instructions. And it's selfish. Yes, I do. It's not the Klingon way, right? Maybe it's time you stop lying here, worrying about your honor, and started thinking about someone else, like yourself. God Hot take. Throne. Hot take. Would you like us to come back? It was like sometimes I say things no, I know you don't want to hear. Go. But guess fucking what? To be said. This is Dr. Toby Russell. She's from the Edelman Neurological Institute. There is one other option I'd like you to consider. It's called Dr. Crusher's like, what the fuck? Replication. I I disagree with Dr. Crusher in this because he, he deserves be presented to know about with it. the options. All options. As the patient, the need all options should be presented to him. With the the likelihood of success for all of them, he needs to yes. have, the, have all, all the information should be communicated yeah. to him, like mm -hmm. the thirty seven percent. But you know, I checked with Starfleet Medical. They have turned down your request to test genotronics on humanoids three times already. Are you really going to hide behind the rules of some bureaucracy, oh. Beverly? Your patient's life is at stake here. Look, before you do any of this... Captain, Dr. Crusher. Go ahead, Captain. We've located the survivors from the Denver. We're ready down here. We have triage team standing... Meanwhile, up. she has to deal with well. this. We'll begin transporting the survivors <clears throat> yeah. on board immediately. Bridge out. Beverly. You know so funny? She also makes me think of Kate McKinnon. Mm. And Kate McKinnon plays yes. Hillary Duff. Oh, or Hillary Duff. Plays Hillary Clinton. Hillary Duff. Hillary Duff. I was thinking that as well, yeah. Oh. As Klingons, we all must be prepared for it. Father! Take him away. Ralph, let me help you. Leave! Alexander, go on. It'll be all right. I'll take care of your father. I've been studying this ritual of yours. Do you know what I've decided? I think it's despicable. I hate everything about it casual disregard for life, the way it tries to cloak suicide in some glorious notion of honor. How many men and women, how many friends have we watched die? I've lost count. Every one of them, every single one fought for life until the very end. I do not welcome death, Commander. Are you sure? And in spite of everything I've said, if it were my place, I would probably help you. But I've been studying Klingon ritual and Klingon law, and I've discovered oh, fuck. that it's not my place to fill that role. According to tradition, <sighs> that honor falls to a family member, preferably the oldest son. <gasps> that is impossible. He is a child. The son of a Klingon is a man the day he can first hold a blade. True. Alexander is not fully Klingon. He is part human. That's an excuse. What you really mean is it would be too hard to look at your son and tell him to bring you the knife. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Worf. I can't help you. There's only one person on this ship who can. But I've decided to break with tradition. I've decided to live. I'm glad, Father. I must still undergo a dangerous operation. I may still die, but it will not be by my own hand. I'll make sure he reaches your parents' home safely. No. They are elderly. They cannot care for Alexander. Would you consider... 
You want me to raise Alexander? I have come to have a great respect for you, Diana. I can't imagine anyone who would be a better parent to my son. I'd be honored. This is my moment of Worf becoming one of my favorite characters on Star Trek right now. <laughs> Hands down. Yeah. Has there been any word? No. Holy shit. Preliminary genitronic scans are complete. His entire spine is just not in his yeah. back. <laughs> Tissue growth proceeding at anticipated rates. No initial signs right, of less rejection. Than 30 minutes. Not bad, not bad. We're losing him. No BP, no pulse. Brain activity? Show me no higher brain functions. Okay. 25 cc's cortisine. All right. Make a note in the log. Death occurred at 1240 hours. Wait so long, show. That's amazing. There must be a backup for his synaptic functions as well. Vital signs are stabilizing. Begin ribosomatic therapy. Increase oxygen oh, mixture to ninety percent. <laughs> you aren't even going to acknowledge what I did for him, are you? You just can't admit that it was my research that made this possible. You gambled. He won. Not all of your patients are so lucky. You risk your patients' lives and justify it in the name of research. Genuine research takes time. You take shortcuts right through living tissue. You put your research ahead of your patients' lives. And as far as I'm concerned, that's a violation of our most sacred trust. I was gonna say, don't even bother. Don't even say yeah. anything. You can't. There's, there's you nothing to say, to say to that. that. Yeah, there is nothing to say to that. There's not. I'm glad they didn't have her say anything. Yeah. Your father wants to do this by himself. It's all right, counselor. I would appreciate some help from my son. Ah. <sighs> uh I think something I, I do want to like slightly start off with mm -hmm. um, uh, oh, uh, the dilemma of the more like the moral dilemma of like yeah. who's right what's right who's wrong what's wrong you know like yeah. blah 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 I think the one thing I do have to say about the Klingons is that it is very ableist yes how they treat this yes uh, it's extremely ableist yeah um, people are able you know it's it's again it is like the the masterpiece society it is you know like there would be no Jordy because he was blind like they would have yeah. taken care you know like uh you're denying someone the opportunity of life based off of what someone else thinks is a disability what they right. think makes life uh, not enjoyable or mm -hmm. you know, unable to function um and as someone who has several friends who live with disabilities, as someone who lives with chronic pain themselves, you know, like it's definitely a very ableist v v viewpoint from mm -hmm. the Klingon culture. Yeah. But, and we'll set that aside. I think that is absolutely moral. worth <laughs> stating because it's mm -hmm. 100% true. Yes. But setting that aside, because that is my truest belief in of that situation, but the moral dilemma of that is a this is a conversation that I think has come up for a lot of people in life. Depending, I don't know. This is something that my mom and I have talked about. Yeah. We have seen you know situations in our life, and we have had very serious conversations where she has asked me, you know, like if 
it got to a point where she wasn't able to function as a, you know like it's something that has come up yeah. <laughs> you know um you know assisted suicide is a very it's it's what is right what is wrong <laughs> there like it's that is yeah very very difficult um and again if i'm setting aside the the fact of, that it is an ableist viewpoint i do understand where Worf is coming from in his beliefs <sighs> yeah that's a very it's very it's a very difficult it's very difficult. Um, it even goes as far into the conversation of people who have taken their lives um, or died by suicide because of mental health yeah. uh, situations, uh, whether that be, you know, their depression or whatever the whatever the case. Um, there, I have seen the conversation. There are people who believe that if someone is that so far off to the point where they are so low that they can't imagine, that there are people who believe that it is their right to choose to take that. And then there are the people who, Riker, who made a very strong argument of what will your what who, who are you leaving behind how many people uh, lives have you affected on this ship who how many have you saved how many look up to you how many you know how will we feel how will those people feel yes when you're gone and is what you're considering selfish and and then it's the conversation of, is it self is it selfish it's it this is, is a very a fucked up gray it's like the most gray conversation you could ever have you could ever fucking have and this is coming from someone who i have unfortunately lost more than several people in my life to suicide um i myself have attempted to take my life um you know, like there, there was a point in time where I couldn't imagine, I could not physically, mentally imagine a life. Uh, but I am so fucking grateful to be here because if I had followed through with that, I, w I would not be where I am today. I would not have the friends and the family and the life I have today. I would not be able to help and be there for the people who need, you know, like... Yeah. I know that being here on this planet and being here on this earth to be there for other people, to be vulnerable in places like this and moments like this, to share with others that you're not alone and that choosing to stay may take time to feel better, but God damn it, it's so fucking worth it. But again, <laughs> that's, it's taken years. It's taken fucking years. Um, and that doesn't mean that I don't still unfortunately have thoughts like that because of my mental disorder, like my mental yeah. issues and stuff. Like it's so difficult. <laughs> it is so complicated and so, and again, to have this be an episode in the nineties, whoa. This is such a taboo conversation. This is not something that is talked about. This is not, people don't talk about this. This is only in the last, I feel like few years that people have really started to like genuinely yeah. openly discuss these things. So for them to confront an issue like this in the nineties is, is very, wow. I th and then I think about me personally, I have had conversations with friends as well where I am like, if I am brain dead, oh, if yeah. I am laying there, I'd like, you know, like... I have a living even, will, yeah. And, and it's like, okay, well, where where is that? Like, if I'm... Where's the line there? Because I'm like, the line if, I'm, if I'm a vegetable and the only thing keeping me alive is a machine, you should take me off the machine. Yeah. But even for me, as far as, like... And it's a conversation my mother had, like... It, yeah. And it's so fucked up. It's so hard. It's... <laughs> 
<laughs> ah! It's, yeah, it's like I'm thinking about the concept of like losing my mind, dementia mm. or Alzheimer's. Like that, yeah. would I look at someone else with dementia or Alzheimer's and think that their life should be ended? Absolutely no. Now me personally, the thought of having to go through that is mental torture. Mm. That sounds so unbelievably painful to me. And I can't imagine having i can't imagine that that is very hard for me to imagine living a life that way um but then again who's to say in the moment you know i can't <laughs> these are all said with the fucking grain of salt because it's all <laughs> yeah yeah tricky because <sighs> until you're in those situations you don't know you just you don't, don't know how they feel know. you don't know what feels right and it's yeah, I could sit here and say left and right that, of course, if my mother were on a ventilator and only alive by a machine, that I would pull the plug for her to then have to be put in the moment and not know if I can do it. Who fucking knows? Well, that's <laughs> why. Know? Here's my here's my uh, sand sandbox soapbox. I'll get on. <laughs> that's why you need you need to talk with your everyone yes. watching. You need to talk with your loved ones about what you want, and you need to Absolutely. get it down in a legal document. Because yeah. then it takes the burden off. If something happens to me, it takes the burden off of my partner from having to decide. It's legally yes. in a document says this is what's going to happen. This that is, is no longer anyone else's responsibility t- to decide. It just mm-hmm. happens. And that's why I think it's it's important because it's it wouldn't be fair to them. Especially to like if you have something like, well, my partner and I have discussed this. But I didn't discuss it with my parents. With my parents. And your parents are then my... like, no, I don't want to do that. And then your partner has to go, well, yes, they do want to do that. It, it, and then it becomes a whole mess. So mm-hmm. these are important these are conversations, conversations that and legal documents that need to be, in my opinion. But No, I agree. Um, to help take the burden off of people. But this is, one, thank you for... Obviously, it would have been fine if we hadn't watched this episode. It would have been fine. No, it would have been. But But I'm glad we did. And I hope that you feel okay and are also glad we did. And thank you for watching this with me. Um, I feel, um, even beforehand, I I already knew things that were going to come up, which is exactly the conversation we're having now of Mm -hmm. this. You know, just this whole thing. Um, and I know again that it's a conversation that needs to be had. It's the same reason of with violations. It just mm, yeah, without it sounding like a woe is me, I feel that people who have experienced as much pain and loss as I know that I have, and I know mm-hmm. that there are others who have. For me, for me personally, mm-hmm. if I feel a sense of obligation to be there for others. Mm -hmm. Like I just got done saying a couple minutes ago. Mm -hmm. That feels like my purpose in this world. That's why I want to be an actor. I don't want to be an actor because I want to win an Oscar. I want to be an actor because I want to help people feel the things they need to feel. Um, Also, I'm going to challenge you real quick. You don't want to be an actor. You are an actor. Oh, I am. That's okay. That's why I am an actor. You're right. Thank you. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's all that, that you're right. (laughs) I am an actor. (laughs) I have to do that with myself. So you're right. I didn't even, for so many years, you, that's a whole different conversation. Yeah, that's though. a different, but that's a side note. I don't want to derail us. I just want to acknowledge it and say it. No, and then thank you. Up. Thank you. Because I am an actor. So I appreciate that. Um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it feel like I, I just feel feel that it's a it's very important and that's why i knew going into this episode it was something that i was going to watch all the way through and i was being mindful again i don't not check in with myself i i mentally there you know like there were hard parts of that episode of course with Riker. i mean he's like that was just so true that was just so genuine like his feelings there and like i understand his pain and i understand his anger and i understand that perspective is that whole monologue yeah. he had and especially at the end there when he said like what about your the people you're leaving behind i have been that person <laughs> i have been that person standing there wondering what the fuck were you thinking why did you leave like what yeah. about us yeah what about us you know i've lost yeah. so many people who it's just 
I'm like, they, how, how could they not know how much <laughs> we love them or we care about them? Like, how could they do this? Yeah. And it's, ah. <laughs> yeah. it's so complicated. Apparently in that scene, uh, they had more, like, there was part of it that they cut. There was more of an aggressive fight between the two of them where they, like, ended up, like, in each other's faces, like, just much angrier. And they decided... No, nah, this isn't quite the right vibe, and and cut that bit Too out. Much. Um, yeah. Too much. Is there was still there was still anger in it. There was a right amount of anger because I, and I think it's completely valid. And I like that they gave, I like that they gave that to Riker, especially with someone who he is very intense in how he, you know, what he thinks is right. Um, and I think that was a good person to give that role to. Um, and you gotta love that, of course, he's follows after Picard a little bit in the sense of he's like, mm, oh, sorry, uh, you're Kling, oh, sorry, actually, um, the specific details of Klingon culture, um, uh, I can't do it. <laughs> it's like, it's like, oh, wait a minute, actually, hmm, why are you doing this? Oh, because, um, sorry, if you really <laughs> wanted to do it right, the, the Klingon way, you know, he got, I think really- it's so perceptive of Riker the moment he's like I think you're getting off on this idea of being a of good being. Klingon because Worf is, is he so into that because he's never it's like I've said this before but because he didn't grow up probably feeling particularly Klingon mm-hmm. he was away from that world that now he, he feels like he has to, to make up for it, it by being the most Klingon Klingon ever if he had just he been wants- raised on uh chronos you know with klingons then he i think i said the name right of the planet um then he would probably be a little less hung up on all of this stuff because he wouldn't feel like he needed to prove all the time that he was klingon and it's like this is another thing is this just you feeling like you need to do this because it makes you feel more like a klingon are you do you actually believe this deep down or are you just doing it because you feel obligation yeah because of blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, yes, Chronos. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, it's Chronos. You were like, oh, fuck. I hate it. I hate that when you say something and then you're like, fuck, am I the biggest idiot ever? Did I totally like, what fuck the that fuck that up? What the fuck is she talking about? Chronos. <laughs> It's because in Star Trek, so many planets are named after, like, the people so many, who live off of yeah. them. And anyway. Any, anyhow. Um... Yeah, that was, I, I'm very, 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 very happy to have watched this episode. Um, is it and you said it started yes. to make you really love Worf? Oh, this was, this was it. This was, I know what you said your episode was. This was mine for him. He just went up. Also really, this. for me, the evolution in his relationship with Troy in this episode. Oh, I, I love. <laughs> he called her Deanna in that he one. Called her and I'm Deanna. Like, that he said, I have grown to respect you so much, Deanna. And I was just like, whoa. <laughs> so that whoa. makes me happy. That just was, I have chills right now. Yeah. <sighs> I just... Um, yeah, this was just remarkable. And his character growth and all of that has been so, it's been so beautiful to see. And this was really a turning point for, for me with him as a character. I've always loved him. Of course, I love them all. But to have him confront his views and challenge himself in the way where he says, I'm choosing to live at least or like I'm choosing the opportunity to live and not taking my life by my own hands to then all the way at the end with the no I would like my son's help like that fucking broke my heart (laughs) in the best way possible but it just that is there's nothing harder than choosing to be vulnerable like that in a moment like that and it's just oh yeah holy shite (laughs) What an episode, y'all. Holy yeah. fucking hell. That was so good. That was that was a very, very, very good episode. 
difficult for 1700 different reasons yeah. <laughs> it's so morally ambiguous it's there's an... <sighs> <laughs> what i do know and i know that it's so hard to understand in the moment when you're feeling that way is that if you are watching this and you are feeling that way and you are feeling that life isn't enough and that you're not enough to be here you are you are and like i said earlier it takes time it will take work and it'll be fucking hard <laughs> uh, but for the first time in my life i i hit my birthday and i imagined my birthday three years from then i have never had that before it's the first time it's ever happened to me on my 28th birthday that's fucking huge y'all <laughs> um so you'll get there and yeah. you're not alone the feeling no matter what it is the feeling you're feeling right now isn't forever even it's when it not. feels like it is and things can change so much more quickly than you think they can just you just don't know what is gonna be in your life six months from now a year from now that could be my life is that so is different. worth <laughs> waiting for and sometimes it's a long wait but sometimes it is i really believe that i really believe that um i do as well yeah uh, we yeah that's why i have i have a semicolon tattooed right there your story is not over yeah. mine wasn't and neither is yours. Fuck, I'm glad it wasn't. Yeah. What the fuck would I be doing right now? I know. <laughs> <sighs> so. I'd be like, on hmm. <laughs> I'd still be like, I've always wanted to watch Doctor Who, but I just don't <laughs> I've to just start. I've never done it. <laughs> oh, gosh. So, yeah. All right. We love you all. So We're glad much. you're here, and we hope that you stay here and i don't just mean the youtube channel but no. also <laughs> subscribe to the youtube channel is that a bad that's like a, that a, a segue in poor taste <laughs> uh what else are we supposed to do <laughs> uh subscribe leave us a comment let us know what you think contribute to the conversation we also have really beautiful conversations about all of this stuff happening in our, in discord, our discord which and you truly, get access to if you are a patreon member and yeah. they really are beautiful conversations happening in our Discord. truly there are um there is a community of people who are there for one another and difficult conversations like this come up naturally mm -hmm. because life is hard uh, yeah. And it's nice to sometimes just have a group of people with similar likes and interests to just confide in. Yeah. And that is what our Discord community is. And it's always such a lovely, beautiful surprise. To Because somehow I'm still always surprised whenever I go in there and start looking at all the conversations and popping in. There's just really beautiful yeah. things happening and being said. So yeah. come join the fun. Yeah. Uh, and we love y'all. I guess... On that note, catch your gal for gals next time. Oh, as God. we boldly watch what no noob has ever watched before. As we boldly cry. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Always. Just wait till we get to the next episode. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> hey guys, thanks so much for watching. If you liked this video, go ahead and give it a little thumbs up. And if you want to be notified when we post new content, go ahead and subscribe to our channel and hit that little bell in the corner.